In the last vlog, we shared some analysis and advice from one of the UK's top pro surfers to help with our turns. The link to this video is above in the top right of the screen. In this vlog, we're going to see how we got on with trying to make the changes and how long it took to start seeing some visual improvement. Secondly, we connected with one of Europe's leading surf coaches to get some more analysis and unearth some more game-changing knowledge. If you're curious to see if there's anything useful that could help your surfing or just want to see some humble pie, then keep watching. I'm James Davis and I've been a skydiver for over 20 years, jumping and competing all around the world. In the last 18 months, I've been surfing at the wave pool in Bristol to see if wave pools can do for surfing what wind tunnels did for skydiving. I wanted to see what would happen if an average surfer trained at the wave pool for a year if they could learn to get barreled, sharing all the mistakes, learning points and experiences along the way. Here are some waves from immediately after the help from Ruben. Three key learning points from the Ruben Ash analysis were, one, the chest leads the turn and I need to rotate more to stop the turn being cut short. Two, the torso rotates ahead of the board turning. And three, in order to do all points one and two, there needs to be the right body posture and positioning to provide the required balance. Have a look at my back arm. It's all over the place because it's being used for balance and to counter all the posture and body mechanic errors. If you look at this freeze frame, you'll see all the points raised by Ruben and they need addressing. The lack of torso rotation is holding back the turn. The trailing hand behind me is about trying to find some balance and I don't have the right balance and body movements to keep stable in the turn. From my perspective, there didn't seem to be much improvement and the surfing actually looks like it has gone a step backwards. But this is probably from trying to put into practice all the information I was given. I found the hardest part was trying to find the newer body mechanics and posture. Most of the time I felt totally off balance from trying something new. The flailing back arm is indicative of being off balance. However, it wasn't all bad news and there were some small hints of improvement coming through. Probably surfed about four sessions since the input from Ruben, with this footage being the most recent. Getting the penny to drop isn't going to be easy. So having started to try some new concepts, we booked some more video analysis and got some input from one of Europe's best surfing coaches at Bow Performance. Building on top of the concepts I'd already learnt with Ruben, Bow introduced some techniques before the turn actually takes place. The key learning point was about hand position and how it needs to change at the different stages of the wave. Stage one, dropping down the wave. Both hands out in front of the surfer, with the chest giving the direction of travel. For me, this means moving the backhand forward and having the chest give the direction, as per the learnings in the last vlog. Stage two, exiting the bottom turn. The body position is compressed, but when the surfer picks the spot on the wave to do the turn and wishes to use the energy they've just generated, then they need to open the back arm to generate torque ahead of doing the turn. Stage three, start of the turn. As the surfer moves up the wave to the spot they've just eyed up, then the back arm can be swung forward to allow chest rotation and to leverage the momentum. A quick check of the recent WCT wave pool event at the Slater wave pool highlights the points really well. Ethan Ewing is known for his turns, and you can see all these points Bose pointed out in his turn. Now there are an increasing number of points to remember, but the one additional learning point here was about the hand and chest positioning between the drop, bottom turn, and start of the turn, and how it changes. So how did I get on with the idea? Well, here's an example before the coaching input.
And here's an example afterwards. Now it's not a slam dunk and there have been lots of follow-up issues that have arisen since trying this advice, such as bogging the bottom turn by pushing too much or having the weight through the front foot too much. The list of things to check off from the takeoff to the first term is rapidly increasing, but it's also becoming more apparent that body movements, body positions and balance are going to be the biggest challenges. The good thing here is that a lot of these concepts are core fundamentals which will help anyone. It's also interesting how many steps are important to sort out before the turn actually happens. Which brings me back to the takeoff and before even making the drop. When Ruben Ash did the video analysis, he also made some suggestions about improving my takeoff, which would be helpful to everyone. But that's for the next vlog. In the next vlog, I'm going to share the points from Ruben about the takeoff along with some of the ways where I started trying the new techniques. If you want to see how I got on and what the golden nuggets were, then you're going to have to watch the next vlog. Until then, enjoy your surfing.